Ooh, it's an Apple. If I'm honest, I've never really been much of an Apple guy. My very first Apple device that I ever bought new was this iPod Touch right back in the days when iPod Touches and smartphones were just becoming to be a new thing. And at the time, I really, really enjoyed having this because before I got this, the only mobile device that I had before this was this phone right here. So it's safe to say that as someone who was just in high school, having a little device that could play your games, that could look you up things on the internet, that was magical. I no longer had to sit in the car and just stare out the window. I could go and play whatever games were on here at that point in time, which may make it sound like I've forgotten all these games. Oh man, no, I remember the, the Angry Birds, the Poppy Jumps, the, the Super Jumps or whatever, like the one with the little monster that, that goes up with the power-ups. Oh boy, I remember all of those. The problem though is that this thing right now is, uh, just like this phone, uh, kind of dead and broken. I think right now the battery here is just cooked and I will have to put a more powerful charger to it. But for now, this thing is completely broken and that's very fitting to describe my relation with Apple. Because as I said, this device was the very first new Apple device that I ever bought but it was also the only ever Apple device that I ever bought new. But why would that be if I had such a great experience with this iPod and playing games on there and, you know, going over the internet? Well, that had to do with Apple's closed down way of doing things. I think it was about two or three years into me having this device when all of a sudden it wouldn't receive the latest updates anymore. And because of that, I couldn't really install any of the latest apps. I couldn't really keep on playing and downloading the things that I wanted to do. And it was just so freaking frustrating. Like I tried all the sorts of ways to just like kind of drill break it. And the only thing that I would ever find on Apple forums or on the internet was just buy another iPhone, just buy another Apple device if you want to stay up to date, which actually makes quite a bit of sense if we look at how underdeveloped these things are compared to what we have right now and how every single year these things would just improve with leaps and bounds. However, what I also found was something called Android. And the premise with Android was you can just download whatever you want. And I've never been back since, which is kind of a shame really, because over the years I've discovered that there's actually some pretty cool Apple devices out there. Like this iPod mini that I got secondhand and then modded to have insane amounts of storage. Like this thing I use every single day and I just love it as a music player. And it just makes me wonder, like what else is there in the Apple ecosystem that I have never ever tried? Well, it won't be the iPods anymore since they've been dead for a couple years now, since the last iPod Touch got killed. And for another thing, I don't think it will be an iPhone for me since these things are over a thousand dollars, which isn't really my type of style since this is my daily driver phone for just 20 bucks. But hey, there is one more thing that Apple makes, computers. And it's not like that's some sort of gimmick that they attach to their company later on because they thought it would be fun. Apple actually started as Apple computers. However, I never knew about that until after I got my iPod because before that, I only thought the only real computers that were out there were Windows computers because literally everyone I knew had one of those. And even if the Windows computer were to let's say break or needed to be updated, we'd never really look for Apple computers in the store because this right here was just a regular old Windows computer. These computers right here were just free 99. So keep that price in mind because let us go and find the Apple computers in here, which as you can see right here, starred at 929 euros at the cheapest. So as far as I knew, Apple computers were just these insanely expensive computers that wouldn't really run like normal computers and no one would really use them, which always made them this big old mystery to me. Like what is going on with these computers that are so different from all the other computers? Why are they so expensive? And most importantly, why if the logo on the Apple thing right here and the logo on all the other Apple material is whole, why is it cracked when I try to turn on this iPod? I legit thought this thing was broken until I saw other people with iPhones and iPods turn it on and the Apple was cracked as well. What is going on with a cracked Apple, Apple? Now, just like how I think that I'll never really be able to get an answer about my cracked Apple, I never really thought that I would be able to get to experience an Apple computer until today that is. Because oh boy, have I got a good story for you. So I've been away for the last few weeks. Uh, for a little while, I actually went on vacation to the UK with my family. We visited London, saw like the, the, the overview of London. We saw the, the Big Ben, we saw all the important things. But when I was there, something truly amazing happened when I walked into a local repair shop. Because what they had there in a small section in the front of the shop was called free to take to a fair home. And you may be able to deduce by just listening to my little intro, what I found there. Whoa! I love the impact of that. And I love how this is like one giant block of apple with just this tiny little thing right here. Anyway, 
I found myself some treasure. And just like that description said, all of this was entirely free. Like, what? This is the type of stuff that never ever happens in real life and you only ever see in YouTube videos, which I guess that this is one as well, but uh, come on. I have never ever encountered anything like this and it's just, oh man, this is exciting. I love it. I freaking, uh, I cannot wait to get into this. It's just really cool to see different kinds of things that I've never got my hands on before. And even if it's broken, like I could try and use this to uh, practice my soldering skills or, you know, like just play around with it. I don't know, but maybe, maybe, maybe something here will work. Now let's get started with the smallest item of them all, the iPod Nano. The iPod Nano was the smallest iPod that Apple made at that time in their lineup. This right here is the iPod Mini, which was already at the time that this one came out in 2004 or five, the small iPod that people could buy. And this right here is 2007 iPod small. <laughs> like look at that difference, it's insane. And we're just gonna go turn it around and oh boy, it really is just like a small iPod. That is so cool. Like, look at the difference here. <gasps> and it's on. I don't know how well you can see this, but we can go and uh, set it to English. So we have music. I don't think there's anything on here. I think all of these things are wiped. 7.2 gigabytes. This one has 119 gigabytes and this one only has seven. Then again, when this thing came out, it was four gigabytes. And this one is so much bigger than this thing is. So um, yeah, the only unfortunate thing is that these things, you can't really mop them because they're so tiny, they're so small. Still though, I do really love if we compare them to the other iPods, just Look at how tiny that is. And I'm so glad that it actually worked. So uh, yeah, let us go and uh, take these things off and let's go to the very first Apple computer. This right here, I believe, is an Apple MacBook Pro from 2008, which basically means that I could have been walking around with this thing and this thing around that time, and I would have been the coolest kid in town. Now, one thing that I immediately noticed is that these things don't look as outdated as Windows computers from this time. If you think about a 2007 laptop, it's probably gonna be something like this, with like the big ass ports on the side and the square format and something that will probably be running Windows XP and uh, won't be very good. Which, if this thing works, I also kind of expect from this MacBook. However, I do have to say that because Apple has always been with this kind of metallic design, this thing still looks rather modern. That illusion only works on the top side though, because if we flip it over like this, what you see here is that there is the DVD player, which I remember very clearly, I was in university when my teacher said, oh man, these DVD players are going away. You will never see them in laptops anymore. And I was like, nah, that ain't gonna happen. We all wanna have a DVD player in our laptop. And uh, boy, was I wrong. Because I guess nowadays we also don't need ports anymore. Then we have our headphone jacks, which we also don't have anymore. And then we have right here, this right here is MagSafe. Now MagSafe is something that I've always heard about and I kind of wanted to try. Here, Apple actually came in with an innovation where they have this power cable that if you pull it along, it will snap onto there. That is so cool. And then let's say someone walks by and then yanks the cable. What would happen is, it would just come loose. That is so clever. And then here on the back, what we see is we have holiday extras. And then this right here is our, ooh, full battery. I don't know if you can see that, but this right here seems to be some sort of button where you can check how much battery is in there, which why don't all computers have this? Is Apple actually innovating here? That's not the Apple I know, which is always taking away features and implementing things that have been on Android for 10 years. Wow, that's crazy. Anyway, um, I think that right now I need to go and open this up to uh, put in the hard drive because I think they've taken out the hard drives here. And then we're gonna see if we can go and uh, fire this up and then see if something happens here. So I think that we're gonna have to open this thing up. Don't look at this yet, we're gonna look at this later. It does, it does kind of smell. From what I can tell, nothing looks very broken or bad. This right here is where the hard drive is supposed to go, but there isn't one now. There we go, that is a solid state drive, which, God, that weighs nothing. <laughs> so now to go and, uh, Put this thing together again. Time for the moment of truth. I'm just gonna go and open this thing up right here. I gotta show you this. This thing right here still has one of the latches, right? Back in the day, all these laptops used to be latched onto like the bottom part of it because the idea was that then the, the display would not come free. I think nowadays the hinges are just so stiff that it never happens or there's magnets here. But this thing right here, you actually push that in and then it comes out. And normally you would have like little hooks that would, you know, that would stick out. But look at this. I don't know if you can see this, but if I bring this closer, you see the hooks pop in to hook in and then if i push it out the hooks go away like you see that you see them appearing that is so cool this computer has actually been quite heavily used um, we see right here that probably the uh, save copy 
new page like these things were probably used a lot i think it's been bumped around a couple of times but uh, yeah let's go and uh power this on and see if something happens i forgot to plug in the button didn't i oh boy look at that that hinge whoa that's wild look at this you know it's probably done that 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 and that oh yeah well, we, we've done all that uh, let's see we can power it on right now i'm hearing something i'm hearing music i am seeing a picture that is wild there we go holy shit look it's saying it's found nothing which makes sense because there's nothing on this disc so now we're gonna have to put a new operating system on here which normally on windows you would have to put a usb disc in here with windows on it and install it but i think i read somewhere that on apple computers you can just connect it to the internet and then put in a command and that will download the operating system itself i think it is option command and r that we're gonna have to hold down i don't know if this right here is the option key but I'm just gonna hold this and see if something happens. No! We'll try with the other computer. Screw you, Apple, for not supporting 2008 MacBooks on your current servers anymore. God, that's hot, by the way, in the back. Moving on, this right here is a MacBook Pro from 2011. Yes, I got three of these. I don't know if any of these worked, but uh, if only one of them works, that would be great. And otherwise, maybe we can, like, take them apart and then put together the parts. We can make one functioning computer out of this. This thing first has more of the rounded corners, more of the shape of like the modern Apple computer. It has just like the modern MacBook, a complete lack of ports here, except for one large DVD drive. Then we go here. Holy hell, here we find all the ports. So let's go and uh, open this thing up, put the hard drive in and then see what's gonna happen. Wow. This one was way easier to take apart because it's just like this back plate here. And then here we are. We are here inside the MacBook, which is very rather dusty. I'm just gonna go and smash the SSD in here and then we're just gonna see what's gonna happen. Oh, um, let's fire it up. We see that the latch mechanism is completely gone for some, uh, some magnets, which is a bit unfortunate. This right here looks so much more like the MacBook that I've seen around the last couple of years. Like the big trackpad with not, without the buttons, the, the black keyboard here and the tiny little button there. See if it does something. God, it does something. And it's showing a screen as well. Where are the broken screens? I thought that the guy said that this right here was all gonna be recycled and all gonna be scrapped. And if I wanted to take something, I was happy to take it because otherwise it was just gonna go to waste. This works. What? So let's turn it off again, get the cable and see if we can actually get uh, an OS installed on here. And I'm gonna have you watch on in the hopes that something's gonna happen all right. But there won't be much of a video. So we're gonna power it on. Uh, control option R. It is working. Starting internet recovery. All right, so uh, I'm just gonna go put, yo, a 13 year old computer is not supposed to be this fast. Something is happening. Something's, yo, that is a Mac OS recovery. I get a mouse. The mouse works. Well, we're gonna have to reinstall it. This does not feel like it's 13 years old and you can't use it. Mac OS Catalina. Select the disc on which you want to install Mac OS. All right, we can try another computer. See if it's the disc or if it's a computer. I'm just gonna bet that this thing is gonna work. Ah, oh, we have something again. Was High Sierra the one that we had just right now as well? Or was that a different one? Please work, please work. I'm calling it right now. We're gonna see in a moment. We're gonna see could not reach the server. I'm gonna go out and uh, try and install this on these computers, not on camera. And then I'm gonna come back to you and then hopefully everything will be installed. Okay, so it's a little later, a couple of days later, and there's been a development. Watch this. Uh, ooh, oh, look at that logo. Look at that logo. Don't look at the weird effect that's caused by the camera. Look at the logo. It is starting up. It is working. I am proud to present you with a functioning backbook. Honestly, this is just amazing. It only took me like a short hour to get this sorted because this right here was a MacBook that we started out with from the new ones. So basically the one that couldn't find a drive. The problem with it was that apparently empty drives can be differently empty for MacBooks as they can be differently empty for Windows PCs. I didn't know that. This drive needed to have a different format put onto it for the MacBook to read it. I did that and then uh, within 50 minutes I had an OS on this. Like that's just insane. And that's something that I've heard quite a bit from people who kind of swear by MacBooks that uh, it is actually quite a snappy system. It feels so much faster than, than Windows probably because this thing is kind of based on Linux. First things first, let's move away from the screen and let's move to the outside where we have this beautiful Apple logo that lights up. On, off, on, off. It is so freaking gimmicky and useless, but I, uh, I, I love this thing. Now I have to say that this design does hide dirt very well. This MacBook right here, I only half cleaned. Do you see what I mean? <laughs> Do you see how freaking clean this is? 
compared to that. Now we haven't come here to see MacBooks being cleaned. I actually want to see them in action. This right here is Mac OS High Sierra, which doesn't really tell me anything at all. First of all, it looks so pretty. Like the wallpapers look kind of better, like higher quality than the wallpapers in Windows, probably because I'm very used to the wallpapers in Windows. And then you have all your icons right here, all your programs which uh, kind of confused me because I thought that that meant that all of these were turned on right now, which they aren't. I think that only Finder is working. There we go, Finder is working. But yeah, this right here as a Windows user is still very, very familiar, except for that uh, the, the, the window management icons are, are there and, and they don't say what they do. They, they're just a stop sign. Stop, drive very fast and go. One thing that this was really good for was to get the other MacBook started because this one right here is actually two years older than the oldest and this one does not connect to the internet to start it up. So that means you have to use a bootable USB drive, which is kind of the same as Windows. However, because it is Apple and Apple is still Apple, you can only get that bootable USB drive by using a Mac. That is the Apple we know and love, where uh, if you don't have enough of its products, you, you can't really use their products. But luckily, I now found myself with free working MacBooks, so uh, I could actually do this thing. And uh, now, this one also finally works. One thing that you may be able to hear, though, is uh, these fans spinning up a bit. And that is because there's really no fence for them. Uh, basically, the only way that the uh, air can escape out is through that little hole right there. This right here, it does look very, very the same as the other ones did. Now, obviously, I really don't put it to the task all that much. I mean, we can go ahead and go here to uh, to YouTube. Though it says right here, please update your browser. Your browser doesn't support it anymore. I think this right here is just a fun novelty old machine to look at. Like how it has the trackpad right here, but it doesn't click, but it has this one large button here. But I think it's better to actually go ahead and look at the other machine to uh, do our little YouTube test. All right, the YouTube test. Let us go here and do YouTube. There we go. Look at how fast that goes. Then I want to go here, search bar, and then we do... Look, that's a good channel. Also, that channel right there is posting daily right now. And then uh, let's go and look at Windows. Let me put it to 1080p, full quality, and then let's just go and see how it plays. Let me turn on the, the sound a little bit and uh, let's go. Right. Well, uh, this is awkward. Last week I was a bit of an oopsie. Yo, that kind of works. Okay, um, 12 year old machine, which has a working, uh, YouTube. It has a working, yo, that's kind of smooth. It powers up very fast. It doesn't seem to stutter with anything. So far, this is, this is not bad. Now I do have to say that I don't have any heavy tasks to throw at this, uh, because I just haven't had the time with this. However, uh, this thing does remain to be some sort of Linux thing. Basically this is Linux with Apple's flavor on top. I don't think I've covered Linux more than just mentioning that's out there as another operating system. It is very usable in just these standard tasks that we just looked at, except if you want to do something something more and then you really got to know your way around the terminal which this thing also had now i've figured my way around this a little bit already because i wanted to see if it could install like word and excel but uh, that was kind of a pain in the ass it is basically more or less like an iphone if it works really well it works really well and it can work really well for a long time but the moment you kind of try to step out on that like i want to install a program that i have it kind of falls apart. This machine is amazing in how it looks and feels. Like how fast it starts up, the way it looks, uh, it is just fantastic. It is it is 12 years old, but it doesn't feel like 12 years old. I guess just not changing your designs at all makes a big difference in how people see them later on. The airflow on this is terrible. And even me just installing the OS got this thing so hot. I was glad that this thing was sat on the table because it would have burned my lap. There are definitely some things where uh, I can see this thing being amazing and being something that's very special. If you grew up with MacBooks that you're like, well, why would anyone use PC? Because PC is uh, is a bit more clunkier than this. It's not as sleek looking as this. And especially around the time when every single laptop still had a hard drive that spinning disk that took like five minutes to start up. I imagine that this thing must have felt like insanely fast. But then would I really use this as my work device? I don't know. I couldn't make the switch to Linux because there are so many special programs that I rely on. And I feel that with Apple, that's it's going to be even worse. But then again, I've only had a couple minutes with it. And uh, who knows? Anyway, I do want to say thank you so much to the guys at the IT store, which is uh, right here. They're in Canterbury. So uh, if you are in Canterbury, I don't know how much of my audience is right there. But if you are there and you need a MacBook repaired or just want to see their little MacBook museum, just go to go to the IT store. They're great guys. They give me all this stuff. 
I'm amazed. I'm absolutely over the moon. It's like Christmas has come early. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to support this channel, uh, for one dollar a month, we have uh, overtime where I make special videos after these videos, where this time we're going to go take a look at this uh, iPod right here. I'm going to train for a couple songs on here, and we're going to see if we can make it work through the MacBook, and then uh, just see how this thing works and just do a quick overview on that. Hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, let me know what your experience is with MacBooks, uh, whether this right here has been your very first experience with them, or if you're more experienced with them, and if there's any one that you would recommend for me to try out next. I just wanted to share this a little bit it's just a quick video uh, next time we'll be back with something more comprehensive but uh, this was just too good to share with you guys so uh, yeah thank you all so much for watching i hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you all next time